a brand new set of rules for wargaming tactical battles in the American Civil War has just been released by Osprey Publishing. It's their newest blue book. Is it good for new players? And how will veteran gamers like it? More importantly, how does it compare to Black Powder? Well, we've played it, and here is our review. Stay tuned at the end for a special guest and an update on our new World War II air game. Okay, here we are in the game room today, and it's the day you've all been waiting for. The American release of Hot Lead and Cold <gasps> Steel is upon us. Yes. And we got to play that game today. We did, so. right? So these rules have been out in Europe for a while, and for some reason there's a delay coming to the States, but they're here as of January 28th. So we've played it, and we're here to give you our review. And what I want to say is make sure you stick around for the bonus round because we got a special guest who's going to give you a hot take. And we all know Carl likes hot takes. Here, Love right? them. Hot Lead and Cold Steel are tactical rules for the American Civil War. The basic maneuver element is a regiment, which means you will not be fighting the entire Battle of Gettysburg, just a small portion of it. The game wants each side to have mm, two to three brigades. We'll be reviewing the rules for sequence of play, movement, combat resolution, presentation, and fun factor. And our bonus round with our special guest, where anything goes. First up is sequence of play. Hot Lead and Cold Steel uses a modified I Go You Go system. A turn begins with each brigade commander rolling for how many aide de camps they will have available. Aide de camps are points that can be used to influence the turn order and help a brigade move more efficiently. Then each side rolls a d10. The highest roll, modified by aide de camp points, will be the first player. This means that it is possible for one side to get back-to-back -back moves. If they move last in one turn, then they can go first in the following turn. This is then followed by an artillery phase where you can fire your artillery before movement as a preparatory bombardment. Then there is movement, shooting, and close combat in that order. And sequence of play. So here in Mark's Game Room, remember we do Pros and cons. Except Matt, who's not here, who likes something in the middle. Yeah, he likes his caveats <laughs> Matt. every time. Yeah. Take a stand. <laughs> We're at war. <laughs> All right. So today it's pros and cons. I'm going to just start off by saying I think the sequence of play for me is a huge pro. Uh, I like it because it's not. Uh, it, it shifts around. Right, you have one side can go, another side can go, and then you can break that with the initiative. And those initiative bids that you make can be really dramatic, right? If you saw our game, right, it really mattered. That's right, times. yeah, yeah. The Union was really looking for that initiative at yeah. the end of the game. <laughs> it really can change the flow. So I really like that. Um, I also like how the artillery has its own phase. Uh, that's another decision, right? You can shoot uh, at the beginning of the turn to kind of bombard the enemy and then go in. But if that doesn't work for you, you can hold it and fire later. So there's a lot of uh, ways to tweak the sequence of play so it's not the same every turn. Um, also, uh, there's one other thing that seems to play, which is when you fire at an enemy, if they have not fired, they can shoot back at you, right? So that is something you're considering as you're doing your sequence of play. Have they shot? Have they not? Am I going to move now? So there's a lot to it, so it's not just kind of a dry mechanic, we're doing this, we're doing that, we're doing the next things. You can kind of influence how the game goes, and I really liked it. So Carl, what do you think? Well, you've named literally all the cool stuff about this game. <laughs> uh, but no, yeah, I say it's absolutely uh, pro as well. I really enjoyed, um, the thing about this game is there is constant decision making. Yeah. You know, yeah. I like to just zone out and just go on my phone when we play <laughs> long games. Um, yes. And you, you can't do that when you're playing this game because you actually are constantly confronted with interesting decisions, which yeah. I really like. So, yeah. pro. Yeah, yeah, I liked it too. Uh, I like the, uh, the variability of the initiative mm -hmm. where you can control the order of events. Uh, in a game turn and the ability to shoot back when somebody shoots at you it sort of mitigates the double move a little bit so it's not totally devastating right. I, I thought it worked well in our game i thought the i really thought the game worked pretty well I thought that was good i yeah. really i really yeah. enjoyed it um any game that kind of mixes it up and makes it a dynamic game and i would say for the american civil war at a tactical level that 
takes a lot of work, right? Because it can be very boring where guys just line up oh. and blaze, and the game comes down to kind of calculating, calculating the destructive power of a rifle musket. And there's really so much more to it. I think this job uh, game does a good yeah, job. Yeah, I thought it was. I thought things were pretty fluid in in our game, and so I thought it was. Uh, I thought it was pretty good in that regard. Yeah. All right. So three pros. Three pros. Yeah. Three pros. All right. The movement system in Hot Lead and Cold Steel is similar to Black Powder by Warlord Games. Brigades decide what type of move they want to do and then roll a 1d10 modified by their aid to camp points. The result tells you what types of move the brigade can carry out. But unlike Black Powder, these rules encourage historical brigade formations by giving bonuses to units if they maintain certain formation. The rules are fairly clear on laying out how these formations work on the tabletop. I'll start by giving the movement a, a pretty big pro. Um, one thing I really like, you know, I, I'm really against generic games and this game feels Civil War because it gives you the sense of the formations that mattered and the ways of movement that mattered during the Civil War. Um, you didn't see a ton of stuff besides Lion and Calm in our game, but they have echelon attacks. I mean, all oh, these different mm -hmm. little things that give you a sense of the war. So what about you? And one thing that was nice is it was not super detailed, so you're not measuring to the quarter of an inch oblique moves and wheels and things like that. So mm -hmm. it, was, it was a little more manageable than some games can be when they get hyper-detailed. Yeah. Is that a pro from you? That's a pro for me, yeah. Pro. I okay. Like it. I like it, yeah. But I'm going to give it a pro, and I'm giving it a pro mainly because I've played Black Powder, and I'm very meh on Black Powder, and this is very much like Black Powder, but it doesn't, to me, feel like Black Powder. And part of it is the way movement goes. It has the same mechanic of getting multiple moves, but it seems to do it much better. It's more fluid. It's easier. And then all the maneuvers that you can do are really well like laid out in the yeah. rules. And so it was really kind of clear and fun more than anything. And, and the activation system didn't seem to be that difficult. So difficult right. that whole formations would just not move, which can happen sometimes in Black Powder. If you have a commander who's not so good and you're a little unlucky, you can get stuck. Nobody in our game really got stuck. I mean, there are right. a few failures, but it wasn't like my whole force couldn't move for a turn. Yeah, great, great for a convention, right? You're, right. Nobody's yeah. going to lose their yeah. whole yeah. turn. Yeah. Right. And I think, you know, the, the author, and by the way, here's a plug. I interviewed the author, so watch that video. He talks about the rules. He was very interested in adding historical trappings to the game, right? Like he wanted you to call moves what they were. He wanted you to do historical moves. So he kind of lays that out. Uh, in a way that's easy to follow and it gives you bonuses in the game. So it's really good. So I think three pros for movement. Yeah. Let's look at how shooting and melee combats are resolved. Both use handfuls of 10-sided dice, which cause hits against an enemy unit's unit coherency, which are essentially hit points. An average unit will have a coherency of 18. Units can also take hits from action that cause fatigue hits. Melee has a procedure which allows a defender to react to a charge by firing or countercharging. Melee has the potential to be decisive. If one side rolls well, they might sweep their opponent off of the field. On uh, shooting melee, I thought the game worked pretty well. I'm a pro. Um, the melee uh, got to be a little bit mm -hmm. uh, hard to figure out in the middle of our game, so maybe not quite as you know 100% pro as, as it could be. But I thought for shooting it was fine. It was easy to determine how many dice you needed to roll. It was easy to determine how many mm -hmm. uh, you know how you scored hits. Uh, the shooting seemed to be reasonable. The results seemed to be you know reasonable in light of what we know about the Civil War and, and, and other games that we've seen. So yeah, I'm a pro. Well, that, I, I like Kyle. It. What do I you like think? It. Well, this I'm game, sensing con. This I'm game, sensing con. this game's like a prison library. The band poetry. <laughs> there's pros and there's cons. <laughs> uh, I am gonna give this one a con, and the reason is that you know my dumb millennial brain cannot handle the ton of modifiers and exceptions that are in this game mm. that come up. For I'll just give you one example that came up during our game that was was mixed up that just isn't intuitive. So shooting at long range with artillery gives you a penalty, but shooting at long range with musketry doesn't. Th that seems like something you would, you know, if there's a long range penalty, it should apply to everybody. There's a lot of little details mm -hmm. like that that make both resolving melee and I, I, uh, shooting a little difficult. And I think especially melee resolution has a lot of steps. The melee got a little complicated. Yeah. It did. That's a fair yeah. point. So, I um, fair and point. I, I didn't think that the results were unreasonable. Actually, I agree with you a lot, Sean, that, you know, there was a lot of, like, morale 
and some casualties, but not like people being wiped out. Except when, except when they were at point blank range, and then and people hit were by wiped out. Units and they did, yeah. yeah. So that was that felt a little historical and cool. But yeah. I, I just, I kind of felt like it wasn't worth all the effort. Like I kind of wonder if the author might have like slimmed all this down to something a little more, you know, quick play. And again, maybe that's just because I'm not one of these seasoned grognard types uh, <laughs> that that loves their charts, you know, and stuff. Come like on, that. We're, try, we're trying to get millennials into it's the hobby. Gaming, it's Come gaming. On. It was gaming in the '80s, Mark. Guess, when it was all about modifiers. I, I remember the '80s. <laughs> all right, so I guess it's up to me, right? Where's yeah. Matt? So give his Matt. Matt. Yeah. yeah, that's kind of Matt. All right. The crowd goes mild. <laughs> All right, pro, pro or con on combat. Oh, so I'm pro on shooting, con on melee. <laughs> so the real wishy-washy. Oh, man. That's <laughs> where I, I can see Matt off camera. Yeah, giving exactly. me the eye. Right, so um, I guess in general, I would, because I like everything else, I'll lean to the pro. But like the shooting is pretty straightforward. Oh, there are some modifiers. The melee definitely gets a little finicky and wonky, right? Yeah. And so you gotta if you like everything else, then just deal with the melee being a little wonky and maybe your club can kind of, you know, sand off the rough edges. It, it's, yeah. it's wild how detailed the melee is when from what I understand from my readings, like actual melee was pretty rare in the Civil War. It was. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So, it was one side or another would generally say we're not doing this. <laughs> right. Well, in this that can happen because it's easy true, to fail morale. True. True. It's That's easy right. to That's fail true. morale, so that can happen a That's lot. True. So, so okay, that, that that definitely puts me in the pro camp. <laughs> you, definitely pro. You won't have to use the wonky melee rules that much <laughs> because right. they okay. usually don't want to wear. Well, well because away. people run. Yeah. yeah. And I mean that's something else I think that are in these rules where there's so many parts of them that are working together that if you play it, you know, five or six times, you start to see how it works together as a whole, and I that so. you know, things yeah. kind of work. So I'd, I'd, I'm, all right, I'm pro, yeah. solidly pro on the combat. We good? All right. We believe. All right. It. I Excellent. Heard three mes. <laughs> quiet, quiet over there. Quiet over there. <laughs> oh, Matt, this should have been Matt's review. Yeah. <laughs> These rules are published by Osprey in a typical blue book style. There's a fair amount of stunning photographs of 28 millimeter miniatures and a clean layout. The table of contents lists all of the major rules elements, making them easy to find. There are many illustrations of how units move and interact with each other, including brigade formations, with excellent diagrams. As with all Osprey books, there is no quick reference sheet. There are two historical scenarios included as well. I'll start off presentation with a pro. Um, I quite liked um, how they had pictures of all the formations and pretty good diagrams and examples. Um, you know, a lot of rule books um, waste a lot of space on stuff that's not necessary. Here they devoted it to something that is actually useful for gamers, like seeing these formations and stuff, which many people probably have never seen, even if they've been playing Civil War wow. games for a while. Yeah, so I, I mean, I agree there is a lot of that which is totally for the good. Like when he's talking about you do you move this way, you have this formation, there's a really simple to see diagram that's easy to understand. But... Here's why I'm going to give this a con. Uh-oh. Because there are a million little charts in this game, mm. right? There's just charts for every kind of thing. And they're all sprinkled out through the book. Now, the game designer kind of put them together in a QRS, and he put it on his Facebook group, so I happily downloaded it. It's six pages long, right? So... I think that goes to our your comment about shooting, where there's a lot of little modifiers here that maybe that could have been kind of combined to reduce that. So when you're playing, you know, if you don't find this quote unquote QRS on his Facebook page or pull stuff out of the book, you're constantly flipping through the book. Yeah. yeah. So that I got to give it a con, Sean. Yeah, Mark, I, I felt the same way. I remember the first time we uh, we played the game. Uh, with some other other uh, club members, and uh, we were trying to find things, and it was hard. Mm -hmm. I mean, the book is is fairly long, so it's got a lot of information in it, which is good, but it was just hard to find things, and it got a little frustrating. And we were also looking some things up to try to figure out how to make certain moves, and and it was hard to do right. for a few things. And, and look, I, I like the game, but it, the book was a little bit hard to get right. through. Especially, so I give that a con. especially with melee. 
Mm. Yeah, right? those are, yeah, it was, definitely it was took like yeah. a brain trust of like five of us who all have like advanced degrees yeah. to kind of figure it out because it's just not clearly laid out. Yeah. So, sorry I got to con that one. Well, I thought the book was easy to read. Maybe you guys are just dullers. Uh, <laughs> you're, I thought you're some millennial that has that all spoon fed. Spoon fed well, millennial. That's classicist. That, you got an engineer and a media guy. I just, a, I just, <laughs> I just watched TikToks to read the book. Oh my god. So, all right, guys. A huge part of our audience is like 55 and older, so don't worry oh. about what he's saying. We're good to go. It's okay. Yeah. Now we look at the fun vector. <laughs> did players have fun, or did they get bogged down in rules and minutia, which sucked the life out of the game? Okay, fun factor. I'm definitely giving it a pro. Uh, from the first time I played it, I really enjoyed it. And I didn't think I was going to, actually, but I played it, and I wanted to play it again. I was enjoying it. And that makes me want to plow through difficult parts of the rules, like the melee, right? Because I'm having so much fun, I get through, and I think it's great. Carl? Yeah, I will give this one a pro, um, because you know what's, what's, what's fun? Stuff that's decisive. A uh, lot of horse and musket games, especially Napoleonics, <laughs> is stuff where you're sitting there, and it's like back and forth and back and forth, and it's so undecisive. This game... I feel like, you know, you get in there, you get stuck in, and it's pretty, you have a sense of who won the combat. Yeah, yeah. And that's really fun to me, like that I was playing and it just, stuff is happening. <laughs> well, it's energy, right? When yeah. stuff's happening, it's exciting, and it just makes people want to play more. Yeah, think, yeah. You know? yeah, no, I, I enjoyed it also. I agree with you, the game is dynamic, and so that made it fun to play. It felt like the Civil War, so it's like, yeah, I'm playing a Civil War game. I mm -hmm. kind of know what's going on, and I enjoy you know, playing with my units and, and everything. And uh, so, yeah, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I'd, I'd give it a pro. I mean, yeah, the book thing, but once you figure out the rule once, you know it. Yeah. And I mean, then you have fun with the game. I think all rule books have those moments. Yeah. But yeah, sure. for me, the fun factor makes me push through it. Mm. Yeah. And this yeah. does that. Yeah, yeah, sure. it was a good time. It was and a also, good time. If, you, if you watch my interview with the rules writer, he says he feels, you know, the rules aren't meant to be competition. They're meant to be fun. Yeah. And they're very open to clubs putting their own spin on things. Mm, sure. Like, if you want to, like, tweak this or that, it probably will not break the game, and you're good to go, right? So that, yeah. to me, adds fun, right? Yeah. We like it when there's the, re you know, when one side gets the rebel yell, they all get plus one on their move or something, right? Yeah. Like, it's awesome. At the end of the day, if you had this set up and I, you know, you're like, hey, you want to play a game of this? I feel like everybody would be like, yeah, yeah absolutely. I think, so. I think, I think so. it's good. I think it's good. All right, on to the bonus round with our special guests. Bonus All right. round. All right, here we are with our famous bonus round, and we have two new people with me, including Tom, who's new to our group, and he played in our Antietam game. And what's really great about Tom, we appreciate him being here, is he is a black powder player. So when we were talking to him about the rules, he kept saying, oh, this is very similar, and he saw the uh, connection. So the bonus is, Tom, how does this relate to Black Powder? Do you think it's in the same kind of family of games? Oh, it certainly shares a lot of the DNA with Black Powder. Yeah. Uh, you guys discussed a little bit before about the moving is similar. Actually, the resolving of the melees is a little bit similar with uh, rolling the resolution tables, uh, even just taking hits on your units. All, all of it feels... If you've played Black Powder, you'll be pretty at home with this one. Mm -hmm. uh, there's certainly some differences, and I have my various thoughts on some of the changes. But, uh, yeah, it's not. It's in the realm of the same sort of games where pretty easy to pick up, uh, not, to, not getting too much into the minutia and the little granularities of movement or anything like that. Would you call it like, um, like Black Powder Light? Black powder different. Oh, like. uh, it would definitely be black powder, slightly more crunchy. Okay. Uh, there, there's more going on in this, I think, than your standard black powder American Civil War game. Okay. You can do. We didn't do, show it off here, but you could do entire brigade formations. You could do a thing where you refuse flanks. You can even pick your shots with the cannons. Uh, those are all things that are a little bit more detailed, and. So I think this game is pretty fun for me because I got to play around with some few extra toys in the era of the Civil War. But uh, one of the things I love about Black Powder is it, yeah. it's so simple. It's really simple. And I have a dad who doesn't play any war games. But I can take out my Black Powder stuff and put a game together with him. And he has a basic knowledge of history. And he can do everything. And I can just walk him through what he has to roll. But he gets the general sense of it. And it plays pretty well. And I think this would, too. It would take a little bit more of going through 
uh, some of the special rules, but I think if you have the general tactical sense, it's represented well on the field here. Cool. So it'd be, would it be good for a bunch of new players? Like, he never played a game before. Would you introduce them with this rules? I personally would still introduce them with Black Powder. I'm a mm -hmm. big Black Powder fan, unlike Mark. Uh, <laughs> Ouch. But I, I don't think this would be a bad place to start either. Mm -hmm. uh, especially if you had somebody who'd played quite a few games of this and really had a good grasp on getting people through the rules so that it didn't bog down. Uh, I think you guys talked about it before. It, it can get a little bit crunchy with the combats and the follow-ups and reforms. Mm -hmm. But uh, generally, I think, yeah, this one is one that I would recommend to new players, unlike some other systems that I've touched. Cool. Well, thanks for joining us, Tom. It's just, like, yeah. really great having you here and getting your perspective. All right, Matt, Grognard here in the game room. Uh, have you ever played Black Powder? I have not. Okay. No. So give us your perspective as a non-Black Powder player. How did you, did you think the rules were intuitive? Would you give it for a new player? Yeah. So uh, I think, actually, if <laughs> the comparison is making me think better of Black Powder if anything, because I hadn't heard particularly good things up until this point, at least from our little circle. Um, but uh, I would actually recommend this game to newer players, maybe with some of the elements stripped out of them, like some of the modifiers. There are things that are probably confusing. Um, but no, I, I would definitely, uh, in, in so far as the ranking of Civil War games I've played, this would be pretty high. I, I quite enjoyed it. All right, so that's if you're a black powder player, there's some great insights for you. You might try this, you know, on an off day or something different. It's really good. Here's my bonus, and I love the fact that artillery in this game, you choose your ammunition, right? Because the American Civil War was about infantry and artillery, right? And in most games, it's just you kind of have points. So I have five points of artillery firing, you roll some dice, right? In this, you choose your ammunition, and they have different effects, which is great, but it doesn't seem to bog the game down. It's very kind of straightforward what they do, so you have great choices without really compromising the fun of the game. So that's a great bonus. It adds to the historical dimension and also adds to the fun of the game. All right. Anyone I would else? add from, from my perspective that I like the ammunition types, but some of them do feel more powerful than others or more yeah, useful yeah, in most situations. The shell we feel is, might be a no, Shell is yeah. very powerful because of how hard it is to pass morale right. and it forces you to take a, t a check. Got it. That mm -hmm. tends to be very commonly used, which, I mean, fair. It's a devastating type of ammunition. That's True. actually my uh, main complaint about this game over Black Powder is, and you could certainly tweak this, I think, depending on your taste, the morale in this game is quite punishing. Mm -hmm. Once a unit is having trouble with their morale, if their brigade commander does not get over there and have aides to camp, they might walk off the field after just getting shot either by one shell or right. if they get one volley yeah. from even the tiniest unit in their flank, they could be going. So. Yeah, and we added that rule that you can aid, aid the camps to rally. Oh, so right. it's it's even harder than <laughs> I, I thought. Yeah. Right, but it's okay. But watch my interview with the, the <coughs> rules uh, designer because I brought that up for him, and he was like, "Yeah, that makes perfect sense. I just never thought of it." So you can add it, and it's really great to do. All right, anything else? No, really I think good? it's a really great system. It's a good uh, system. Okay. I'm very disappointed in all of your unwillingness to be meh. But meh. Otherwise, <laughs> all good to go. Meh. <laughs> nah. I, I like Carl's decide more fun factor and decisive. All right, um, so let's to total up our pros and cons. Okay, so that brings us to 12 pros and 3 cons, which means we recommend. Hey, thanks for joining us here for this rules review in Mark's Game Room. If there's any other rules you want to see us talk about, we're happy to do it. we got a lot of great content coming up on the 8th Air Force, so if you're going to watch Masters of the Air, we're going to have some great tie-in content for you right here, so stay tuned. Thanks. Like and subscribe.